Good morning, and thank you for joining us. My name is Renee Gilmore, and I have the great pleasure of working with many organizations and individuals to bring you this Memorial Day program this morning. One of those organizations is Booker High School. The music today that you're going to feel and hear is brought to you by these very talented artists under the music direction of Alex Zikafus. Thank you all very much. As you well know, music is a very important part of military services. Music and musicians play an important role in military life. Musicians have always inspired the troops to action. It entertains when troops are dressed in their very best and the all too familiar sound of taps is heard when troops are laid to rest. This day, the music will help us remember. So thank you, musicians. Now, I'd like to introduce our chaplain. 
Ted Smith for the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we invite you to join us here today and rejoice in your presence. In the quiet sanctuaries of our own hearts, may we lift up to you our loved ones who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. These hallowed grounds are guarded by gardens of stone where they still stand the watch as marble sentries. Father, you tell us to approach you boldly and unceasingly. We beseech you to help us put men and women of integrity in our government, that the ultimate measure is where we stand in times of challenge and controversy. Help us to shape and make a world where we lay down the arms of war and cultivate a harvest of justice and peace. We recognize each generation for their sacrifices to protect the freedoms we enjoy. This current generation is no exception. They are our nation's finest and are standing watch to keep evil at bay. Father, as we gather to honor and remember, may our thoughts and words be seasoned with your grace. Hear our prayer this day, and in your mercy answer us in the name of all that is holy. Amen. Would you please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing until colors are retired. stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you, Corporal Brown. Corporal Brown is with the Venice Young Marines, excuse me, Young Marines of Venice Middle School. Thank you very much. Thank you, Corporal. All of our students are here volunteering. School is out, and so these wonderful young people want to be here. Please seat, please be seated. We appreciate you as a community coming out to be with us here today. In fact, community is exactly why I'm here. I'd like to do just a little bit to give back. And community is so important. When my uncles were in the Vietnam War, I can tell you that many, many days there were community people who came and they would say, how's your brother Charles doing? Or how's Arthur? And my mother would say something like, well, he got another stripe, but I'm still in charge. Somehow, just being able to have a conversation in a safe place, being able to call your loved one's name gives us comfort. And so we appreciate you being here today so that we can speak the names of our fallen and of course remember. Not everybody came home and that is why we are here today. The fallen troops of families are left behind and they need us to be with them. And it gives us comfort, those of us who participate in these activities, to be with them. I'd like to read a tribute that we've prepared at Sarasota National Cemetery Advisory Committee. It reads in part, whereas on Memorial Day, we honor military service men and women who lost their lives in the line of duty. Memorial Day originally began in 1868 as Decoration Day. The holiday called for the beautification of graves of the soldiers and sailors who had fallen during the Civil War. The holiday commenced with the arrangement, as was said, of benefiting services and testimonies the flag display, and the choices of flowers for the spring. These were arranged at the grave site. And whereas we today again give due honor to fallen troops, there is another important group of Americans that deserves our recognition and gratitude on Memorial Day. That group is the Gold Star families. These families lost loved ones in military defense of American principles. Gold Star families and all families that lost loved ones in military conflict made a sacrifice for our great nation, losing sons or daughters. On Memorial Day, we will join our grateful nation in honoring and remembering the fallen. Therefore, let it further be known that Sarasota National Cemetery Advisory Committee and Sarasota National Cemetery recognized the sacrifice of the families of U.S. fallen troops that gave their lives. Signed this 26th day of May, 2018, Renee Gilmore Chairman and John Rosen Trader, Cemetery Director. It's my pleasure to introduce John Rosen Trader, Director of Sarasota National Cemetery. John's family has a proud history of military service. His great uncle John, for whom he is named, was decorated for valor during World War II. His father was a Korean War veteran. What I've come to know of John is this. John takes great care and he is the one, the quiet in the storm, when families come out to make arrangements here at this beautiful place. John takes the time as he would with his own family. This I know, I've observed it for several years now and it has certainly touched my heart. So it is my great pleasure not only to work with John, but to introduce him today.
Good morning, everyone. And before we get, uh, before I have my few brief remarks, I would just like everyone who volunteered with Flags for Fallen Veterans, will you please just stand and who placed flags on the grave sites here starting at 8 o'clock this morning? Thank you so much. Misha Richardson is uh, clear in the back there in the orange shirt, one of the many, uh, but uh, she not only uh, picked up this responsibility of volunteering for us, but she also takes care of our wreaths across America uh, that'll be this next December 15th. So mark your calendar if that's something you'd like to be involved with, but even more importantly, uh, June 2nd, is when all these flags, so that's a week from today, all these flags will be picked up, properly stored, and uh, be ready for next year. So if you'd like to come back out, uh, we would appreciate that help. I believe around 7.30, is that correct? Yes, 7.30 on Saturday, June 2nd. Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and our nation's veterans, on behalf of the National Cemetery Administration, Thank you for assembling here in this beautiful Patriot Plaza. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you today in tribute of fallen American troops. Sarasota National Cemetery exists as a shrine to honor them. And thanks to the Patterson Foundation of Sarasota, Patriot Plaza is a public gathering place where our community pays respect today. I want to thank Renee Gilmore and the Sarasota National Cemetery Advisory Committee for organizing today's ceremony. Your outstanding support of veterans and their families is an example of the gratitude that is due to them. To the members of veteran service organizations who are participating in this ceremony, thank you for your community service. Service is in your hearts. Tony Kurtz, and our cemetery staff tirelessly work tirelessly to maintain this hallowed grounds. With assistance from our grounds maintenance contractor, Warrell, we are dedicated to keeping this national shrine as one of the most beautiful in the country. It is a final resting place for the fallen. Prayerfully, it is also a place of solace for families and place for the public to pay respect for a high price of freedom. Each day we observe Memorial Day on the final Monday in May. On this day, we bear witness, bringing honor and meaning to a tradition of tribute for departed heroes. For those who are experiencing this first Memorial Day without your mom or dad, brother or sister, husband or wife, grandpa or grandma, know that the nation mourns with you. Collectively, we will not forget. Today is a fitting time to reflect on President Lincoln's charge to care for those who shall have borne the battle and for the families and survivors. In closing, I simply ask everyone to join Americans across this great nation for the Memorial Day National Moment of Remembrance. Monday at 3 p.m., wherever you are, please pause for one minute in this act of American unity. May God protect all those who serve. May God bless those who have sacrificed so that we may truly be the land of the free and the home of the brave. May God bless you. I'd like to introduce a group now that will do the service and sacrifice ceremony. This is not in the script, but I'm going to say it. That was the most beautiful rendition of our national anthem that I have heard in a long time. Thank you, Brooker 
Booker High School for doing that today. Good morning. The Blue Star Service flag began being used in World War I as an unofficial symbol that a son or daughter was serving in the military. During World War II, it was officially adopted by the Department of Defense to indicate that an immediate family member was serving in the armed forces during a period of war or hostilities in which the United States is involved. To this day, it can be seen proudly displayed, usually in the front window of a home, by family members who have a loved one currently serving in our military. The Blue Star service flag contains a blue star that represents hope and pride. The red border represents the blood given by many warriors in defense of our country, freedom and human dignity at home and on foreign soil. The field of white stands for the purity of spirit and the price of peace that only a warrior can truly know. When a warrior gives his last full measure of devotion in defense of this nation, the star on his blue star service flag is covered with a gold star. The gold star represents courage and the supreme sacrifice given to the cause of liberty and freedom. The family of a fallen service member will often place this special gold star flag in the front window of their home as a sign of honor and remembrance. Another symbol of service is the Blue Star Service lapel pin, which is a replica of the Blue Star Service flag. It identifies immediate family members of those serving in our armed forces during times of official contact, conflict. The Gold Star lapel pin issued by the Department of Defense to families whose loved ones died in combat theater at the conclusion of World War II Congress established the gold star lapel pin to provide an appropriate means to identify widows and widowers children parents and brothers and sisters of members of the armed forces of the United States who lost their lives in the defense of democracy and freedom during World Wars I and II, and any subsequent armed hostilities in which the United States became involved. The Gold Star Lapel's pin's unique design incorporates the symbols that include the family's loss. The laurel wreath border signifies valor. The purple field signifies the family's grief or mourning. The Gold Star has been used since World War I to signify died in combat theater. The next of kin pin is also issued by the Department of Defense to the families of those service members who died from a non-combat injury, such as an Ill illness, training accident, suicide, or car accident while on active duty. A Gold Star family can be identified by the Gold Star lapel pin or the next of kin pin they proudly wear near their hearts. In closing, Blue Star family is the family of an active duty or honorably discharged member of the United States military. I am the Blue Star mother of U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Daniel Corey Fell and U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Sharon Elizabeth Fell. I am also the treasurer and the Blue to Gold liaison with the Blue Star Mothers of America Southwest Florida chapter. 
Our chapter serves our active duty military by sending care packages to those deployed, and we sponsor our veterans in the nursing homes with donations of Afghans, reading materials, and our time. A Gold Star family is the family of a United States service member who died in combat theater from, or from a service-related death, illness, suicide, or accident while on active duty. I am the Gold Star mother of United States Army Corporal Frank R. Gross. I'm also the chaplain with American Gold Star Mothers of Tampa Bay, a veteran service organization. I honor the service and sacrifice of my son by volunteering at the USO Welcome Center at Tampa International Airport, the Fisher House at James Haley Hospital, and I also volunteer for an organization that supports families who have endured the loss of their beloved veteran through suicide. This concludes our presentation, but we want to thank Ms. Renee Gilmore, Chaplain Ted Smith, and Mr. John Rosentrader for inviting us to share about these cherished and honored patriotic symbols of service and sacrifice.
musicians. Dave Taylor is the friend one needs in times of trouble. He's proven that he will literally take a bullet for you. And I mean really take a bullet for you. He's done exactly that. In fact, he was medevaced from Cambodia after a firefight nearly ripped off both legs. Dave was awarded the Purple Heart and Army Accommodation Medal for his action in Cambodia. During the 10 months he was in hospitals, he developed a passion for photography. Now he's a photographer entrepreneur after a 32 year career with the US Postal Service. One of his photographs is on a US postage stamp and we actually have one hanging here on, the, on this property. He's an award-winning photographer of faces and places. David is the kind of friend from whom those of us who know him certainly draw inspiration. He's a person who lifts you up before you even realize you're falling. Best of all, David is the kind of friend that remembers. On Memorial Day, he is one that will call the name of a lost comrade. Please welcome David Taylor, photographer, veteran, humanitarian. Mike Bloomfield, he was my friend and he is an American hero. Today, I'm asking you to indulge for a moment about my buddy Mike. But Mike represents about 450,000 men and women killed in military service since the war to end all wars. Thank you, families, for your sacrifice. My buddy Mike was 20 years old when a sniper took his life. We were two young men from the Midwest, and I mean really young. You might say we still had Rice Krispies around our mouth. We knew each other less than six months, but in that brief span of time, we became brothers. We knew each other less than six months and fresh out of infantry training, we met in Elkland, California. Four or five of us were thrown together, I guess by fate. We were standing one breezy day around the parade field, the parade field, where we learned to march in perfect formation, and it doubled as a place to huddle. So we were hanging around, chatting idly of much about nothing, you see, idle chat with new acquaintances can be quite useful. It helps newly minted troops mentally prepare to leave the protection of hometown and homeland. At some point, our conversation turned to the subject of girlfriends back home. When this guy, who towered over me six foot something, and who had been pretty quiet and reserved, could hardly wait to show me a picture of his girl. The picture was a wallet size, and it was slightly faded. But when I held the photo in my hand, that's when Mike and I shared a small world moment and a howling laughter. I said, I know her. She used to talk me into paying her fare into the Cedar Point amusement park. Mike's response, that's how I met her. She convinced me to pay her way into the park. <laughs> we talked more about home and friends that day, and we would laugh at silly jokes until tears came to our eyes. One week later, together, we boarded a Continental Airlines jet for Vietnam. Without speaking words, I think we both envisioned hanging out and looking out for each other. We stuck together and ended up in a tank unit, second of the first cav. 
We fought for democracy from the inside of brutally hot combat tanks and half-tracks. At mealtime, Mike bartered for sweet peaches. He savored them. It was his yellow gold, and he coveted every ounce. Mike taught me the art of negotiating. If I pulled a can of sweet peaches from my sea rations, Mike couldn't resist. He would have to hand over his ham and chocolate bars that were my favorites. He said I was the toughest negotiator in the unit. If I had to do it over again, I'd give Mike every can of peaches in my possession. Two months into our Vietnam tour, our company was told we're going home. We couldn't believe our luck. Two months in combat and we were going home. Home where parents would throw their arms around us and neighbors would invite us over for hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. I could get my garage band back together and Mike could take his girl to Cedar Point Amusement Park again. But we got it wrong. Instead of going home, Mike and I were reassigned. We were going to Charlie Company together. Well, kind of, sort of. Mike went to 3rd Platoon and I went to the 4th Platoon of the Gary Onan's unit, 1st to the 7th Air Cav. Most days, our platoons faced horrific firefights. Like everyone else, there were times when Mike or I served as point man. Point man. What an appropriate term for a soldier to head out first and detect trouble. Mike had military savvy and Michigan-style common sense. He survived his point man job. Yes, there were moments of fear and fright, but we put fear aside. Fear is not what gets a soldier's job done. In combat zones, we worry about the people back home worrying about us. We try to prop up loved ones by stealing a moment in enemy territory to drop a note to family members. Mike was serious about writing home. I don't know the contents of his letters, but I do know Mike had dreams and plans for his future. May 17, 1970 changed Mike's course. Corporal Mike Bloomfield is the reason I join you here today as our great country remembers and honors our fallen troops. We awoke to sniper fire that morning. Mike was in the 3rd platoon and they were at the center of the raging action. After things settled down, I went up to my squad leader and asked to go over and see Mike. We were brothers in arms. I needed to see his face. I needed to get and give assurance that all was well. As I approached Mike's area, he was settling into his position on perimeter defense. We locked eyes. He stood up and jumped on a log that raised his tall frame even higher. I raised my hand and gave him a perfect salute. He returned a salute. In a split second, in the blink of an eye, a sniper redefined our friendship. Mike Bloomfield, July 3rd, 1949 to May 17th, 1970 reads his headstone. Mike is an American hero. Mike is nearly one of the 450,000 men and women who wore American uniforms and died in combat since the war to end all wars began. Every one of them is a hero. They fell in lands far away from home. Japan, Europe, Korea, Vietnam, the Middle East, you name the place. Chances are, Americans in uniforms, all heroes, died fighting for democracy. During World War I, the number of graves on Belgium and France's battlefields were so great that a surgeon wrote a poem, Flanders Field. The surgeon was struck by the image of bright red wild poppies blooming among the rows of white crosses. Decorating the graves of fallen troops with red poppies blossomed into a tradition during the 20th century. 
This tradition is in keeping with the very first Decoration Day, which dates back to the Civil War. In 1868, General John Logan ordered the stewing of the choicest spring flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in battle. Over time, Memorial Day became the holiday it is today recognizing American troops killed in battle in all military conflicts. Part of General Logan's order that reads, otherwise decorating the graves of comrades that died in battle may be the origin of another long-standing tradition. This one involves coins. In 2015, I visited Mike's grave and placed a quarter on his headstone. According to tradition, placing a penny at the grave means simply that you visited. A nickel indicates that, you dis that the deceased trained at boot camp together. A dime means you served with the soldier in some capacity. But placing a quarter, the biggest coin, has the deepest meaning. It says that you were with the soldier when he or she was killed. Memorial Day honors the lives of service members who died for a cause larger than oneself. Their lives were dedicated not to conflict or death, but to compassion and to life in this global community. More than anything today, I'd like to say to citizens who are not pausing in tribute this Memorial Day, that our country's fallen troops were real people. They had plans for sunny days, reading books, listening to music, practicing photography, playing team sports, fussing with their siblings, experiencing a first kiss, shedding a tear over a breakup. They had favorite foods and stuff they couldn't stomach. They were real people, not like avatars in video games or animated characters in the movies. Their blood was real when they bled, deep red like poppies. They earned honor and our thanks. They were ordinary people who responded in extraordinary ways in extreme times. These heroes rose to our great nation's call. For us, they gave all. I am thankful for the privilege of joining you and our grateful nation in this tribute. We will never forget. David Taylor, that's my friend. Thank you so much. I'd like to introduce Commissioner Paul Caragiulo, who is here representing the Sarasota County Commission. Commissioner? Well, good morning. Thank you, Renee. And David, thank you very much. Um, it's my privilege and, and honor to be here on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners for Sarasota and I'd like to read this proclamation. Whereas Memorial Day was originally established in 1968 to honor the thousands of men and women who have given their lives to secure America's freedom and national ideals and ensure a lasting peace, and whereas our commitment to freedom, justice, and human dignity has been challenged many times in many parts of the world. Whereas on this 152nd anniversary of Memorial Day, as a community, we recognize that we have a duty and obligation in remembering those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for their country. All gave some, some gave all. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Sarasota County, Florida, do hereby proclaim May 28, 2018, to be Memorial Day in Sarasota County presented this 26th day of May, 2018. Um, and it's now my 
privilege and honor to present this proclamation to Tony Gross, representing Gold Star Families. Two. 
of the fallen troops represented by the families on stage. Seaman Andrew John Adams, United States Navy. Specialist Christopher S. Brockway, United States Army. Corporal Frank R. Gross, United States Army. Specialist Stephen Taylor Hayes, United States Army. Specialist Patrick Lay II, United States Army. Private First Class Jalfer D. Vaccarano, United States Army. Sergeant First Class Charles Brown, United States Army. Until our last breath, we will speak their names. Are there any Gold Star families in the audience that would like to stand and be recognized, allow us to honor you? We thank you. Accepting the wreath on behalf of all Gold Star families, please welcome Gold Star mother, Kim Hayes.
try to maintain some composure here. Uh, along with some of these families that are represented, um, our son is interred right across the hill there in Section 5. The most appropriate thing I can share on behalf of the Gold Star families is the spirit and mindset of the young men and women who raised their right hands, assumed the associated risk, and in each of their cases, it cost them their lives. I believe this letter my son wrote from boot camp expresses the hearts of the other fallen represented here today. It's from my son, Taylor. Hi, everyone. So we went to an air show today in downtown Columbus with civilians and everything, and some super cool things happened that gave me chills and pride that I wanted to share with y'all. First, we pulled up on buses, and when we unloaded and started walking toward the gates, there was a crowd of people cheering and clapping and taking pictures and welcoming us. It was awesome, and we didn't even do anything. Second, there were a bunch of planes doing tricks and a guy parachuted out of a biplane with an American flag flowing behind him in the air. And for the first time, I got to drop everything and render a salute in public. Thought that was neat during the national anthem. Third, on our way home riding the buses, there were hundreds of people lining the highway, waving and clapping and giving us the thumbs up as we drove past. The moms did just like the movies and picked up the little kids' hands and waved for them. Just little things like that remind you what we do, why we do what we do, and that it is, it is completely an honor to serve this glorious country. Just thought I'd share, but I need to get to sleep, so I'll write soon. Tell Nana and Papa thanks for the letter. I love you guys. Night, everyone. Taylor. Thank you each so much for standing with us here today. Your presence and this wreath brings us comfort that you won't forget these whom we love and miss so much, that you will catch the torch they threw, hold it high, and keep the faith with us in their honor. Thank you so much. If tomorrow all the things were gone I've worked for all my life And I had to start again At the beginning of my life I'd thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause that flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died Who gave that right to me And I'm glad we stand up next to you And defend her still today there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota To the trails of Tennessee Across the hills of Texas From sea to shining sea from Detroit down to Texas, from New York to LA, 
And there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died Who gave that right to me And I'm glad we stand defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA everybody now and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the man who died to me and I'm glad we stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA thank you
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am one through the storm through the night guide my hand Lord to the light take my hand precious Lord and lead me home when my way grows drear precious lord please linger near when my light is on Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near, when the day the day is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call. God, my feet, Lord, lest I fall. Take my hand, take my hand. Are they incredible or what? Families, we do hope that this music is uplifting for you. Please rise for honors and taps. Almighty and merciful God, we remember before you the heroes that lie here at Sarasota National Cemetery, Arlington, and Normandy, and other resting places on hallowed ground across this globe. We recall with reverence each and every one that died for the freedoms we enjoy today. 
Send us forth to remember and honor each one with each sunrise. We beseech you to watch over the men and women that protect us today. Your divine providence in America's military history has brought us through darkness. Help us to keep prayer in our military. It is part of our equipment. Bless and protect military spouses and preserve marriages. May the Gold Star Mothers know of our gratitude and reverence. May we sing a song of peace for those that have fallen. Tears, prayers, and words of praise will not return them to life, but will sanctify their deeds. Father, may we all live for you with no reserve, no retreat, and no regrets. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Would you please remain seated or in place while the Gold Star families exit the stage? Thank you very much. Choose. 